I'm probably looking at it different lens as, as a mother, but then I think also the pandemic exposed a lot. Yeah. So, I mean, I know like every parent thinks their child is the smartest child ever. And I, I firmly believe that, that she's very super intelligent. So totally clueless when at her 18 month appointment, the pediatrician's like, you know, how many words is she saying? She's like 12. I was expecting that to be a little low, but you know, just, you know, we're moving along. We're in a pandemic. And she's like, well, it should be about 50. And I'm like, okay, 15. well, 50. the positive pregnancy test. Yeah, I'm your mama. One of the most important things for a child is a stable nurturing environment. I think the struggle with definitely social development has been at the top of the list. We're used to having daycares. We're used to being able to go to the library and have book time and we're able, you know, to go to music playtime and all of these different things and that has really decreased. And so when I ask parents about certain developmental milestones, there's a lot of questions. Like I don't necessarily know because they haven't been around a lot of other toddlers or other infants. Being a first time mom, it's, it's been an important, it's been important. Hi. Hi. It's given me the tools not just to take care of her, but also to take care of myself. That's very important. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> So um, this is kind of what to expect, um, and like I said, this is the last visit with me, but that doesn't mean that you can't text me and you can't ask me questions, and if I see her on the schedule, I'm still going to come in and say hi. <laughs> so like dealing with mental health, trying to find care for that, you know, um, either working or you know being home looking for work, trying to find your own housing you know, having enough to pay bills, rent, I mean, all this stuff is just compiled together for so many families. It's, and it's, it's hard stressful. to figure out how to dig the way out, isn't it? The, just, the stress alone, it, it, it kills me. If that's the what, only thing I do good in my life, I'm fine with it. I just, I want her to have a childhood she does not have to recover from. Can I have a hug? Oh. Where are you going? I gotta go keep working, but yeah. it was, as I do, it's my job. I gotta go help another kiddo too. You're gonna do You gonna get me some ice cream? You gonna pay for it? I'm not paying for ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, I am a mother of, of a child who that needed to, that that we needed to navigate through the system. But even then, it was hard. During the pandemic, it was so hard to get services, so hard to call people, so hard to, I mean, before you could just show up if you couldn't get through and say, hey, I need the, I need this. During the pandemic, you were, everything was to be done online half of the time. I don't know how um, families who, who were affected by the digital divide were even able to get services or if they got services. Been a struggle, and I know that part of it too is her teacher. Like teachers are coming and going from the schools, so there's no consistency. Mm -hmm. And so her teacher left. There's a saying that says, uh, "Without joy, there's suffering." And coming out of the pandemic, so many of us are suffering. Before the pandemic, we saw more children in care and we're, we, we see a fraction of those children in care um, because of job loss, because centers um, have had to scale back the number of children they can serve based upon the CDC guidelines. Um, after the great resignation, we see a decrease in teachers in the early childhood workforce. And also, there's a lot of burnout in the field, so teachers are choosing to do other things. Our village was really shaken by COVID. The teachers had deeper connections with the families, could give the families parental advice um, when something was going on in the home. Teachers could bring in the resources from the school as well as our partners, but it's been hard for us. So I can't imagine what's happening to the schools that don't have this level of richness of possibility for the children and their families. 
You know, we all know that parents' mental health greatly affects, you know, children's mental health. And I really have to explain that even in the infant and toddler period, maybe even more so in the infant and toddler period. And so when I've seen parents who are under anxiety, who are under stress um, because of the pandemic um, or the, you know, repercussions of the pandemic, I definitely notice that also in the children and we have to discuss that and be open about it. And so we want to be in touch with those families. They should be receiving parents as teachers or some sort of prenatal services. Pre-K should be free and accessible from the time children are born. It should not be a burden on families nor the provider because who pays? We have the money. It's just we have to decide how to spend it and what's important to us as a nation. For a lot of us, um, the smiling faces and just the laughs and, you know, the aha moments has been what keeps us working every day. But that doesn't exist all around our country. That, that's what I do it for every day. Because I know with good teachers, they can change the world. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, check out these other videos from USA Today to stay up to date with all the latest news.